Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining, joining me today. Um, my name is Dr. Joyce M. Hughes Molden. I serve as the um, Director of the Office of General Education, a division of the Office of Undergraduate Studies. And as you know, um, we um, uh, manage uh, Bison Advisor, which is a predictive analytics platform um, used um, throughout campus. <laughs> Um, mainly through the Office of Undergraduate Studies um, for our advising practices, as well as um, <clears throat> um, helping to get helping students to get access to tutoring services. But of course, um, these uh, workshops, this workshop that you signed up for, our, our intention of it is um, to recruit more schools and colleges and or departments within these schools, within schools and colleges on campus to um, utilize Bison Advisor. And so again, I thank you for joining me today. I'm going to uh, just give you a quick synopsis of the platform. I want to turn my camera off. And um, towards the end of the presentation, um, I will allow for some, some um, Q&A. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I may have to stop just to let people in. But I think this is, a, this is pretty much all who signed up for today's workshop. Great, so <clears throat> I always um, um, do my, just do, <laughs> to speak briefly about the Office of Undergraduate Studies. Um, we are really the hub of um, student success for our undergraduate population at Howard. And our mission is to provide integrated academic excellence support along with career exploration and development programs to attain stellar persistence, retention, graduation, career, and postgraduate outcomes. Um, and so this is a quick synopsis of, of um, some of, of our services. Um, so we have uh, three, uh, unit, three main units of service. The first I'll mention here is the Academic Center for Excellence, uh, once called the Center for Academic Excellence. So if you um, have been um, um, familiar with CAE, it is now ACE ACE for Academic Center for Excellence, Excellence, and it serves as the Central Academic Services Hub for undergraduate students and housed under the Academic Center for Excellence is ACE Advising Services. Um, currently, we advise um, uh, just COAS, um, freshmen and sophomores. Um, we also have ACE Learning Support Services, um, and um, this is where you'll find our tutoring services. Um, we have the ACE Scholars Program. Um, it was once called the Honors and Scholars Development Program. And then last but not least, we have ACE Student Initiatives. And under um, this um, component of services um, in ACE, um, you'll find orientation and other retention-based programs. And then we also have the Center for Career and Professional Success, which helps develop and equip students with the requisite tools to successfully matriculate and embark in career search campaigns with uh, success, I'm sorry, with skills and confidence. Students and alumni have direct access to career opportunities through career fairs, on-campus recruitment, interviews, um, employer information sessions, workshops, and coordination of various uh, networking activities. And so the Center for Career and professional success um, absolutely provides services for our undergrads, but really they serve the whole um, of our uh, Howard community, um, inclusive of alumni. And then um, thirdly is the Office of General Education that I lead. It is a new um, office under the Office of Undergraduate Studies. And I think the next slide um, provides a little, just a little bit more detail. Um, and so we serve as the centralized convener of Howard uh, University faculty and stakeholders to determine what it means to be a Howard graduate. And so I always tell people when students come to an HBCU, it's a very, um, very intentional decision to come to a historically black, and college, uh, historically black college or university. But we want our students when they graduate to have some, some definitive, oh, I'm sorry about this some definitive um, um, 
outcomes uh, from their experiences at Howard. And please excuse um, my colleagues trying to get a hold of me right now. <laughs> um, so the Office of Under, I'm sorry, the Office of General Education maintains, assesses, and facilitates the revision of the current core uh, Howard University curriculum and general education, I'm sorry, general curriculum management. And we also um, are moving forward to support compliance with curriculum standards and academic policies by maintaining academic systems and implementing checks and balances to ensure that students meet graduation requirements. Um, hold on one second. I just want to make sure this alert stops. One second. Thank you. Um, and so part of part of our work, of course, is the managing of vice and advisor. Um, and as time progresses, you will be providing more information about the services that the Office of General Education will provide. But we're here today to talk about Bison Advisor, and I call it the hub of engagement for our undergraduates. And so um, many of you signed on um, because you're you understand that um, that Bison Advisor is a tool. It's a tool in which we can communicate with our students and students can be fully engaged in their their academic journey. And so some of the some of the features or the tools that we have within Bison Advisor are time management tools where students class schedules and their unofficial transcripts um, are are um, held. Um, and I must say that data student data um, in Bison Advisor is pulled directly from from Banner. Um, students have the uh, um, have access to uh, make a well. They have they can make appointments with their academic advisors. Academic advisors can make appointments with their students. We also have it where students can make appointments with tutors. Um, tutors, although we haven't too much practice this here in the tutoring center, um, the the platform does allow for tutors to write notes um, to share. I guess with academic advisors about um, how tutoring sessions go with um, any any respective student. And then also um, it allows for communication with faculty, students that have communication with their professors and vice versa. So we call it a three, it, it having a 360 degree uh, capability of communication. Um, within Bison Advisor, we have what we called coordinated care networks. And so the coordinated care networks obviously are broken up into three, three components. And so people, advisors, administrators, faculty, career services, um, we're, we're gonna move, we are going to move forward with um, uh, financial aid, Burstar's office, utilizing um, uh, the Bison Advisor platform, which is exciting because we know that um, financial aid is, is one of the more an integral um, um, issues and offices that our students will need consistent communication with. Um, counseling, um, and you know, later in the, in the presentation, we'll talk briefly about how you know faculty or academic advisors can make referrals. And so, counseling is one of those services in which um, referrals um, are most likely to be used. Tutoring services, again, referrals used um, when an academic advisor um, sees that a, their student is in, is in some need of some academic support, they can refer students to, to tutoring services. In our case, it's, uh, it has been um, here in AIDS Learning Support Services, once uh, known as Tutoring and Learning Support Services. Then process. Um, <clears throat> Bison Advisor allows for note taking and sharing of standards, um, referral and transition policies, um, and also coordinated support and communication processes. So I, I like to tell anyone, all uh, departments that are considering and remind those who are already utilizing the platform that the, the, the it is a tool. And so it's only gonna work as, as, as well as you use it. What I like about Bison Advisor as with any um, online platform, its purpose is to help streamline, simplify, structure systems. And so this, this platform, and you'll see, it will allow for, for um, departments to really consider how they wanna communicate with, with students uh, throughout the academic year. And then technology, tracks communication, shared documentation of service interactions, 
case management, and progress supports. These are all uh, components of vice and advisor that make up for um, well-structured and coordinated care networks. Um, so this slide just kind of summarizes vice and advisor. So of course there are student profiles um, and, and they state we provide a 360 degree view of the most actionable student data, which is academic, financial, and behavioral to support holistic and strategic student care. Um, we also have these coordinated care units. So for example, we have the Office of Undergraduate Studies, um, the tutoring center, utilizes uh, Bison Advisor, academic advisors utilize Bison Advisor. We can communicate with one another about the academic journeys of our students. Um, we can use the platform to predict when there's a need for academic intervention. And so the, the platform uh, really centralizes interaction of records like notes, documents, and customizable permissions. Um, and, and also the uh, kind of skipped over it here, the alerts, the case referrals, um, to really make sure we're providing high level services for our students. Campaign management. Um, so I want to provide a disclaimer for campaigns. The, the platform allows for campaigns. Campaigns are when you, you um, identify a specific group of students um, perhaps within your caseload, most likely within your own caseload. Uh, maybe it's students who have um, low test scores. And so you want to um, identify them in the platform, email them and them, they alone, so that you can encourage them to come to tutoring. You can uh, create a campaign in Bison Advisor to reach out to them and the the platform will allow or create a, uh, a link for them to click on, for them to uh, be prompted to make an appointment with a tutor. Um, again, as I mentioned, um, appointments can be made between academic advisors and students and vice versa. Also faculty professors who uh, utilize the platform can communicate with their students directly through Bison Advisor. And then it's multimodal um, in which you can engage uh, with individual groups of students through email and text. And we'll, um, as we move forward, you'll see um, that we, we're um, now, we're gonna be um, introducing to the student body, the whole of uh, Howard's undergraduate uh, student body, the mobile, the student mobile facing of Bison Advisor. And so on the left side of your screen um, is uh, our two images that that you'll see um, when you are utilizing the uh, platform from a, a desktop or a laptop. To your right, you'll, you're seeing the mobile uh, and an image of the mobile facing of the platform. So in Bison Advisor, um, I'm to the left of the screen, um, and they have it here as navigate. And I'll talk about some of the terminology because it can't get confusing, but it's all the same thing. And Bison Advisor, you can uh, conduct advanced searches. Again, if it's a, a, a you know, if you're looking for all the students in a college of, of business, um, uh, I'm sorry, if you want the platform to um, identify certain students within the school of, school of business, um, then you can do that. Um, you can uh, refer students, you can manage your caseload, appointment reports, early alerts, intervention campaigns. I will kind of tie those together. This is when you can uh, send um, notice to your colleagues that this student is in need of some academic support or some, some kind of intervention. Uh, front desk management, uh, this platform is really uh, has great uh, capability for a sound uh, front desk um, uh, front, de front desk uh, services for your um, department. Um, and historical analysis, and I do have a slide that, that shows, um, gives one demonstration of the, how you can look at data through Bison Advisor. Um, to the right of your screen, we have a checklist here where the student mobile facing has a personalized student path, um, intake survey. So once the, uh, upon students initial uh, engagement with the student facing of the platform, they will um, be prompted to take it an intake survey. Um, it has the capability to, to poll 
Um, nudges are part of um, our messaging, like when we send, when we create campaigns or we send mass emails to students, a nudge is an extra note of encouragement or an extra instruction that you may want to um, provide for your students. Student calendars there, of course, their courses are housed there. Um, hold centers, but um, I'll go back to that. Uh, students can um, sync their calendar and as can uh, staff and faculty who utilize the, the platform, you can sync your calendar um, um, into uh, Bison Advisor so that um, there's the least likeliness of, of any clashing in scheduling. Um, major selection guidance, and then it connects you with campus resources. So some of the resources I've already uploaded into um, the student facing, the mobile student facing are the Office of Undergraduate Studies, the Financial Aid and Versar's Office, um, the Office of Admissions, Registrar, um, Campus Safety, I believe. So those are resources we want students to be able to identify you know, rather quickly. We know they have their mobile devices as all of us do um, on a regular basis. And so this allows for some real-time communication and real-time um, discovery or, or, or finding when a student um, needs, a, needs, you know, a quick answer to a, a service that they need. In the middle here, we have, again, appointment scheduling by students, intake favorite paths um, from Navigate students displayed in Navigate. Um, um, please excuse my, my uh, colleague keeps trying to call me. Um, connect, connect network and link students to their support team and then academic uh, plans created by students accessible to advisors. So it's a really, um, it, it, this platform engages uh, both fa uh, fa faculty and staff and student. Um, the students are fully engaged in their academic journey. Um, uh, staff and faculty, which I really should say academic support staff, um, are can, can fully engage and be aware of the academic journeys of their students through the platform. This is just another uh, image of what the, um, the, the um, I'm sorry, what the, the mobile facing of the platform looks like. Um, and I've, I've already mentioned all of these features, but it just gives you a closer look. And so I, I, I like this slide because it just, it, the, the, the reason I made this slide is just to make very clear that when you hear people on campus say EAB, when you hear them say Bison Advisor, when you hear them say Navigate Student, you are hearing them say, you're hearing them talk about the same platform. Um, just for some historical context, EAB um, stands for um, Educational Advisory Board, <coughs> excuse me. And the university really built a relationship with EAB through an initiative that the Office of Undergraduate Studies engaged in some years ago um, called the HBCU Student Success Project. I think it's been about five years. Oh, thankfully, I was there from the, from the beginning of all of this. And so I've seen how um, connecting with EAB and then finally purchasing uh, this predictive analytics platform, communication platform, has really helped us with um, ensuring students are provided high-level academic uh, advising uh, services. And so, um, yes, we, we uh, built this relationship with EAB through the HBCU Student Success Project, and it was um, Howard University, Dillard University, and Morgan State University. So the three institutions that I've just named, we all um, have, um, we all utilize um, EAB. We call it here at Howard Bison Advisor. Um, and so uh, when you, most likely when you're referring to Bison Advisor, you're talking, well, it has to be, you're talking about the desktop, laptop facing of the platform. When students or you mention Navigate Student, you're talking about the mobile facing, the mobile student facing of the platform, but it's all the same platform. Um, uh, but I will say too, that uh, Navigate Student is not anything that staff or faculty need to download. It is specifically for uh, students and they can um, download uh, the app in Google Play um, for those who have uh, Androids and for uh, students who have um, Apple devices, of course, they can purchase through the App Store. And so this, <clears throat> now, 
uh, an hour would not allow, will not allow for fully uh, a full demonstration of vice and advisor. But I, I, I believe I have slides here <laughs> for you that I, I think that are, are most would be most um, advantageous for you to see as academic support staff, staff and our faculty. Um, once you, you know, just to fam familiar familiarize you, <laughs> excuse me, my tongue, you with the platform. Um, and so this is what we call the advisor dashboard. This is where when a, an advisor goes into the platform and searches for a student, this is what they'll see. And of course, I did not click on every tab. Uh, this is the initial tab and overview. You'll see that um, I blacked it out, but this, this student's name, the student's name is here on the top of the screen for you. Um, below the overview tab, you have uh, the number of courses in which the student received a D or F, um, the number of courses that were repeated by the student, the number of withdrawn courses, the number of missed success markers, and then their cumulative um, GPA their total credits earned the student earned 124 I'm, I'm, I know this student graduated um, the credit completion percentage was hundred percent and right here is where we indicate whether or not this student is in need of some academic intervention some ac extra academic support the the platform determined that no this student was a low was not in need of of, of uh, any interventions. They are, you know, well-performing student. Looks like this student is a double major. They have a, a major in criminology as well in, um, in psychology. The student ID number is provided here. The classification of the student and the most recent enrollment of the student is listed here. And if I were to scroll down, there's more information, but this dashboard is gonna be of most importance uh, for those who are providing um, advising services. To the right of the screen, um, you see um, where it says staff alerts, there's a yellow uh, circle here that says zero. This is, if this number were three, that means I have three alerts from colleagues around campus. Um, it could be OUS, it could be athletics, it could be whoever's utilizing the platform who have identified a student. <laughs> excuse me, um, that is in need of academic support, the alert, this an alert would come to me if they need tutoring services. So the alerts are only going to be, uh, it's not going to be that uh, one of our advisors sends an alert and it goes to everyone. No, if uh, I'm, I'm, my services has been uh, providing tutoring services. So uh, the academic advisor identified the student needed tutoring, that alert comes to me because in the system, I'm the designated person uh, for tutoring and learning support. Um, but as you look down, you you have um, the you can um, send a message to your student. You can add a note on this student that um, other staff or faculty can see. You can add a to do to the student. So if the student needs to fill out an application for a scholarship, or they need to go ahead and you know, or fill out FAFSA or fill out um, a form for whatever they need to, you can you can um, send them a message here um, for them to do. Um, you can report on an appointment, again, just adding notes about uh, how an appointment may have gone, um, a fulfilled appointment has gone, uh, create a request for an appointment. This is where you can request uh, to the student to schedule some time with you, schedule an appointment. Um, I, don't, I don't think everyone has this capability. I do where I can go into the platform and um, look at a student's profile and, and um, see who they have access to and make an appointment with the most appropriate person given the service that they are in need of. Um, this is a very wonderful uh, um, feature in Bison Advisor where you can create um, a student list. And so perhaps you are um, School of Education, but you want to, and, and all of the students in the School of Education are assigned to you, but you, you, you need to send, you need to watch a certain group of students. Perhaps it's the students that are, um, um, they're doing their practicum, they're, you know, uh, do, you know working their hours at a, at a, a a school and you have some assignments or you have some things that you need them to do and you need to monitor too how they're doing in their other classes. Um, you can create a list of those students and um, and I don't have it on the on the uh, on this presentation, but at any 
given time, you can uh, click on that list and determine whether you want to send a message to them or you can click on each student, look at their profile. But the point is that you can identify and create a list of certain groups of certain groups of students. Um, and we really have called this our watch lists. And so I do think that's a very helpful feature. You can issue an alert. Hey, there's an issue. There's low test scores based on who that's at, at, at who that's um, assigned to in the platform, that alert will go to that person. If it's tutoring uh, or, or need of some time. I mean, just given what's in the platform, if it's time management for whatever reason, if that's something we have in the platform, it will come to someone like me or whoever uh, handles helping students with time management with workshops or what have you. Um, also, <clears throat> here you can see if there were um, uh, open, this, you can see if there are any campaigns, <coughs> excuse me, in which the student is a part of, the student was not, and then the, the uh, platform allows just some quick links to quickly get to Bison Web, quickly get to Howard's homepage and banner. And so um, in Bison Advisor, as I mentioned before, you can sync your calendar. Um, you can sync your, um, we're using Microsoft 360. You can um, sync that calendar into Bison Advisor um, in the platform. So I want you all to take a, pay attention to, um, to all of this, the whole slide, but definitely right, right now the the availability I have here. If you look under available times, there's an actions tab, um, but then you'll see days of the week. <clears throat> this line, this is where we identify uh, availability, um, the day and time, I'm sorry, the days and times, um, the range of dates, the location, um, in my instance, is general education, maybe yours, it's um, the Department of Education, Leadership and Policy Studies, or its curriculum instruction in school of ed, or its school of ed. The purpose, mine is Bison Advisor Assistance. I've indicated that uh, people can make appointments with me or they can drop in during a certain, uh, certain hours, the, the which is simply informational uh, for students. Um, the care unit is faculty advising. I had to just make up one for myself because um, we're building this office out. A personal link, which is located here. We are not utilizing this, this, these personal links anymore um, because um, the aim now is that they're not needed. Students can utilize the uh, mobile facing of Bison Advisors. So these links are, are not uh, functioning. Um, so I want to make sure I point that out. But at the time I did this presentation, we were still using it. And then I can determine the meeting type that these appointments can either be virtual. No, I, well, I said virtual slash online, but you, the, the other option is that you can have it in person or you can have it um, by phone. And um, again, this just shows you you know, the processes of creating um, your schedule here in Bison Advisor. So you can add time. Copy time is when I, I liked what I did with this one. I'm just going to copy that and then tweak it a little maybe for the next one. It's Mondays and Fridays, and it's um, for um, pre-registration workshops. Um, rather than having to go through the whole thing again, I can just copy it and that'll, and you know, you just tweak it. Um, you can delete it if it's just null and void. You can just de you can delete it all together. Again, add personal link. We're not using personal links anymore. This demonstrates for you um, a closer look in making the appointment. So here, uh, it's asking you when are you available to meet. I, I'm you know you can click Mondays and Fridays from eight to five. Um, all times listed are, are in Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> Excuse me. How long is this availability active? And so here you can indicate forever, or you can indicate, you know, it's just from May 18th to June 30th, or it's just for the spring 22 semester or summer 22 semester. Uh, some of it's already um, uh, provided for you, prompted for you, or you can, you know, be clear. You can determine what the range of dates are. Um, um, again, we're not using the links. We're going to skip down to what type of availability is this. And so it can be appointments alone, 
Um, in person would be the meeting type, the care unit would be whatever your unit is, location, whatever your location is. Um, it could be a campaign. So, or, and I like to do it as both, uh, some, just depending on the service I'm providing. Sometimes I needed to, I, you know, I want students just to be able to make a campaign on their own, I mean, an appointment on their own. And then there's other students that I will need to have to, um, you know, encourage to make an appointment with me. And so I just want to make this time available for both of those options. Excuse me. And so this is a list. This is actually mine. These are, this is a list and I blacked out the names, but this is a list of appointments that have been made with me for Bison Advisor. I updated this slide. I added this slide recently just to show how it would look for you. Um, one of the views of appointments that have been made, um, made with you. Um, and so you see here the date, the time that they chose. You see here that it's it's been for Bison Advisor Assistance. There's no course attached to any of these appointments, no comments that they wanted to add. They could have written a note to me. They did not. The, the duration of the, these meetings are 30 minutes. Um, no, I didn't file a report and there's no other details, but this is just kind of a, a, an overview of how it looks. It could be, you know, more uh, verbiage based on, you know, what, you know, how you are uh, managing uh, these meetings and or how students are communicating with you with the comments that they add when they make appointments with you. But in, in general, this is how, it, this is one of the views of the appointments made with you. Um, I, I added these two images to show how you would issue an alert. Um, and so as I showed you on that, on the dashboard page, you can, you can click on the link to issue an alert for a student once you've gone into their profile. Um, and you can um, select a reason, perhaps it's poor test scores or they are in need of athletic tutoring. It looks like it's highlighted here. Um, <clears throat> and then on the next image here, excuse me, um, you can select is this associated well it's asking is this associated with a specific class and the platform what it does which i think is awesome is that if that is the case it populates all of the classes not only the classes that the student is currently enrolled in but also the classes that they have been enrolled in so for whatever reason <laughs> maybe I, I honestly they wouldn't need tutoring for a class that they have already taken um uh but of course, for classes that they're currently um, enrolled in, you can identify it here, write a comment, and then issue the alert. It'll come to me, or or if it's athletic tutoring, it would go to the athletics. It would probably most likely go to Mr. Bowden. Um, add a note. So this is where, um, as I showed you in that initial uh, dashboard um, slide, um, when you click on that, this is what the note um, prompt looks like. You write your note. Um, you can determine what the reason of the note is. Um, if there's a URL for whatever reason, maybe they, you know, the note needs to be directed or it needs to have some, maybe the note has some reference to admissions or it has some record to orientation. You can include that URL and then you can determine here who sees this note. I have my name here or right here is the student's name. We haven't too much utilized that. Um, we haven't found too many situations in which we, you know, students needed to see notes that were written by their academic advisors, but that is um, a capability of, of the platform. Um, so <clears throat> this is what students see when they want, when they, and this, again, this is not the mobile face and this is the uh, desktop laptop facing <laughs> um, and this is where students can make appointments so if this was an actual student this is one of my test accounts their courses will be listed here they can determine which term they want to look at to see their courses um, if they were to click here they would see their calendar i didn't include that in this presentation but as you can see it's a tool for them to help them with organizing their time and the platform utilizing the platform um, helps to further organize their time, specifically when they need to make appointments with their academic advisors or faculty who are using the platform who are providing academic advising. Um, <clears throat> so as you can see, 
um, when you're making a new, when they're making uh, an appointment, um, we're asking them, what can we help you find? Below you will find available options. And that's important to note because the platform really is um, cognizant of the student experience within the platform. And so in other words, um, we have certain academic advisors that provide certain services, right? So some provide pre-registration um, workshops, some provide uh, graduation uh, workshops, and um, you know they'll be prompted through from the academic advisors to make an appointment or or appointments. I should let me just say appointments. They have pre-registration appointments, graduation appointments um, that that students will need to make up, you know, in which students will need to make appointments with them for. If by any chance, now mind you, the academic advisors I've just I have just shown you, they they provided or they um, indicated what their availability is for that service from a certain certain day, certain time, certain range of dates. Within those dates, if all of those appointments are filled up by students and um, Sarah comes to make an appointment, it will not show up here because the, the platform will not allow it. If the appointments are all filled, it will not even be an option for them then of course she will need to contact you know the office of undergraduate studies or whoever her the, the respective advisor is but again the platform um is very um it streamlines um, um and it's focused on a um, seamless student experience um and so we're not going to give them the option of a selecting an appointment uh, that that really does not exist and so which department would you like to schedule an appointment with um, what is the service and then pick a date. If you look at the um, right side of the screen, I mentioned to you before view drop in times. Obviously, if it's a drop in, there's no appointments to be made. You just drop in so that when you click here, it just shows the times in which the, um, the staff member or our faculty member um, is available. So this student selected that they want tutoring. They needed an algebra one. <clears throat> And they said, now they, they're, they're going through a process of deciding what works for them. So you're gonna see a few dates, <laughs> but um, they select January 4th. And then, they, and then they said, no, let me try the 14th as a matter of fact, because we just came back from Christmas break. I give it a, I give it 10 days. I'm gonna select the 14th, maybe I'll, I'll find some time. They select available times. Um, <clears throat> so the platform identifies um, well, it shows here there really were no appointments on the 14th, but what it also did is it provided a, upcoming appointments that are available uh, for the student to choose from. If you look here, um, there's under tutoring and learning support services, uh, free tutoring is available. That sentence, you'll see here that there are uh, two sets of initials here. Um, and these are indicative, <clears throat> excuse me, of the two people that provide Algebra One tutoring. So it's myself and another tutor. And so if the student were to click here, they can look, they can, um, the system will kind of flesh it out. Um, or actually right here, view individual availabilities. They want to see my availability you can click here and see all of my availability. Perhaps, and that, you know, uh, as far as tutoring is concerned, that happened, it happens where students have uh, built a relationship with a certain um, tutor and they want to keep seeing that tutor because that tutor has been very helpful for them. They can see the availability of a specific tutor, which is, which is a good thing, <coughs> excuse me. And so um, I, the students selected um, that, of course, they, the, the department was tutoring and learning support, the service was algebra one, the date they ultimately chose since they had all these options was January 17th from one to two o'clock PM at uh, what is, it used to be called TLSS, it's now ACE Learning Support Services. Joycelyn Hughes Molden is the tutor. I've written a note, um, hey, this is what you need to do so we can have a successful session. Um, if by any chance the appointment is virtual, this is the virtual information. Um, um already in the notes from the tutor for students to use um, the student can write if they'd like to share any additional information they can also select 
if they would like an email reminder and a text reminder, which is great because you know we want to help. The, the the platform is good about helping students to stay engaged and and plenty. We know that you know there are times when students have appointments they kind of forget, but the platform does its. Uh, duty in trying to remind students. And then they make the appointment. This is what they see. Appointment schedule. Great job scheduling your appointment. <clears throat> then they can go back and view their appointments or they can go back to square one to schedule another appointment, perhaps with another unit of service. But this student chose to view their appointments and here it is. Just confirmation of what they just did. They have an upcoming appointment for Algebra 1 tutoring with Joycelyn Joyce Hughes Molden scheduled for uh, January 17th at one o'clock. So again, the, the hour doesn't allow to fully um, demonstrate the, the capabilities, but th that's gonna be the most utilized um, tool within this overall <laughs> tool of advice and advisor for students for them to make appointments with their advisors, with tutors. And, um, and, um, and, and their courses have been listed. And, and as we get more staff, more faculty to engage with the platform, of course, um, uh, the communication will, will enhance. So I, I added this to the presentation as well, um, just to share that, again, data that is uh, populated into Bison Advisor is pulled directly from Banner. And so, um, there's going to already be student data in the platform, but uh, not only does it have data from Banner, but it also houses everything else, obviously, that you do in Bison Advisor. So your appointments are recorded. It's, and what I mean by that is, um, it, you know, it remembers that on uh, January 17th, um, uh, so, so and so made an appointment with Joycelyn Hughes Molden for tutoring. There is, um, um, or it, it, it keeps track of uh, academic advisors who have had appointments with uh, students. Um, this is also inclusive of um, keeping track of appointment summaries. Um, these are notes that uh, advisors are taking, um, appointment requests. Um, appointment campaigns and check-ins. Check-ins has been very helpful for tutoring and, and those of you on the call who are who have uh, some kind of structure as far as tutoring is concerned, maybe. Um, it's a great feature. We Bison Advisor has a kiosk um, component in which a student can check in and then uh, whatever other systems you have in place, whether it is they, they go and sit down at, in a certain area to wait for the name to be called or you know they check in <clears throat> in our case we had students to check in and then they just go and sit at the we call them stations if they came in they checked in for algebra one and sat at the algebra one station or the algebra station so kiosks are um is a tool that you have access to. Intervention reports, this is where we can look at the alerts, cases, progress reports. Of course, we need more faculty buy-in for some of these things, but definitely for alerts, cases, um, academic advisors definitely utilize uh, those tools. Student data reports, again, notes can be viewed here. Again, uh, for things like assignments, attendance, that's more of a, a faculty, um, component of the platform. Study hall. Um, I know athletic, the athletics department utilizes this, uh, you know, this data um, because uh, student athletes are required to fulfill a certain amount of study hall hours. And so they use that. And then staff reports, you can take a, a, a wider look at uh, availabilities um, and then calendar statistics. Now, I will say not everyone will have permissions to view these things, but this is data that can be pulled um um for you if you if you'd like um <clears throat> more data so the 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 uh left hand um the left the left side of the screen excuse me you'll see that um the platform allows for population health analytics providing data that kind of gives you an overview of the health of the university how students are performing um and completing their journey here and then on this side it's more focused towards the engagement of the student mobile facing of bison advisor i've already showed you um uh what the student mobile facing looks like but this is a brief look or a short look on, on um the um what they call the population health analytics population health dashboard and 
um, I, as you can see, I did not, um, I didn't, um, I did not uh, provide any, you know, stipulations as far as um, who to search for. Just look at the enrollment history of Spring 22, and these are the stats that were provided in Bison Advisor. So, and this is this is, um, I would say, pretty accurate. And the reason why I say that, I say pretty accurate, is because we're still finding for for transparency purpose, we're still finding some glitches um, between communication with communication between Banner and Bison Advisor, small glitches in which number data is not absolutely correct. And it is largely because of the cyber attack we had. I do think we've done a great job of recovering from that um, as an institution, but we are still finding things just to, you know, that 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 needs some attention. Um, and so we expect for this data to be accurate um, well before fall semester. Um, these slides are worth for my other presentation. Um, so that's that's the end of that that component. <clears throat> you know, the, the the introduction of Bison Advisor. And as you know, um, per the email that I sent, I've, I have a whole host of uh, meetings, uh, workshops, trainings for Bison Advisor because the purpose is to recruit more schools, more colleges and their respective departments to utilize the platform. This is a, a phase one workshop where I'm just giving a quick introduction of Bison Advisor. Phase two, this is under the assumption that you've talked it through with your, 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 uh, your team um, and or you've already made the decision. Maybe it didn't even need it didn't take the workshop. You're just here for just some informational purposes. But um, this is for um, for me to discuss with you all how you want to set up Bison Advisor, how you would like to utilize the platform for your school, college, and/or department. And then phase three, COVID willing, um, will be um, the in-person Bison Advisor training on Wednesday, August 10th, and Thursday, August 11th. Um, and I have been telling people that on um, Wednesday, August 10th, I'd like to focus on the usage of the platform. And, and as well as Thursday, but also use Thursday to talk about the data polling because um, that we know that everyone's interested in data. How can we, how can we, um, you know, further gauge how our students are doing and, and, and what the health of our schools departments, uh, colleges departments are here on campus. And of course, this is my contact information. And that is all. Um, I see a comment here in the chat. Okay. Thank you. And I'm going to stop.